Well, good day, folks. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I've uh, just requested the missus' help to uh, lay out uh, some stakes uh, for getting the not, ground. Not barbecue ones. <laughs> right. Uh, for getting uh, the ground ready to start our sawmill construction, shed construction. Uh, so we're just going to lay out the dimensions, plus I want another three feet in all directions so that I can take the tractor. That'll be my area. I work with the tractor and we'll build within that. So you're trying to get a level space here. Well, not really level. Uh, we're more interested in smooth, in fact, a bit of a slope so that any water, whatever, will roll down. off. <laughs> we're doing a, uh, a pole barn construction so it can be eight foot off the ground in the back and nine foot or nine and a half feet on the front. Okay, so you don't need to get it level, just smooth. Right. The roof line will be level. Ground? Doesn't matter. <laughs> that's the beauty of a pole barn. You just, uh, if it's six inches lower in one corner, you just make the pole there six inches longer. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Perfect. <laughs> it's just so simple. Uh, it sure saves on a lot of landscaping and <laughs> as long as you don't need a perfectly flat surface and we don't. Uh, it just needs to be well, just regular ground that you're walking over without breaking a leg. You need a reasonably level surface for the mill itself to sit on. The mill has to be level. Yeah. But you do that by using the different jacks. It has six different jacks that you can manipulate to, to make sure it's level. The ground where it's sitting on doesn't have to be level. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So we'll keep you posted. Not going to do a whole lot of videoing on this, uh, but just show you some general bits, progress. Bits and pieces and as we go along. Yep.
uh, we're just here at the, uh, the start of the construction of our uh, sawmill shed. So we're not going to do a lot of technical details. Basically, this is our my first attempt, anyhow, out of four or five pole barns to to do one that's uh, at least temporarily free floating, just on uh, concrete pads. But it is very sturdy <laughs> at this point. Seems but to be. <laughs> but again, this bracing is mostly temporary. So once we get the uh, other side done, we have nine trusses, I think. That's those sitting right over there. Right, nine trusses that will then span between these two pieces. And then uh, we'll have to look at figuring out exactly how we want to anchor everything on a long-term basis. What's the dimensions? Uh, this part section that we're building is uh, 16 by uh, 18. And then we will put like a, a wing on that side uh, over there that it will make it about another eight feet added on. So what's the uh, west wing for? Well, uh, the mill itself is about uh, 25 feet in length. So a 16 foot structure, or even an 18 foot structure rather, in this direction, isn't going to be enough to completely cover it. So this, this will be the, the center, the main part, but then we will have an extension that will provide coverage for the whole mill. For the rest of the mill. Yes. So hopefully this shows, but that will show you the other end. And the first, what I call an end wall, is standing. Sawmill shed construction is progressing. I'm told that the bracing on the corner post is temporary until they figure out exactly how it's going to be braced, but. fall and preparation for this. All lumber cut off of our own wood lot and milled with the sawmill. The idea is to get the sawmill under cover so it can be used rain or shine and particularly in shine in the hot summer days to have some shelter shade would be nice. My brother is going to be milling quite a bit of lumber to build his garage with, so. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> of course it's beautiful. <laughs> what? One of them is upside down. <laughs> oh, no. I, I thought maybe the thing that was wrong with that picture was that Michael was in it. Well, that too. Yeah. I'm assuming you're flipping that upside down one right right way up at some point here. Yes, that's just to get them up there. Right. And, uh, it's an engineering thing, you wouldn't understand. I probably wouldn't want to understand if it's an we engineering have, we thing. We have this one now basically <laughs> braced. Yes. So now, or next, we'll flip that one up and then we'll be able to just strap the two together. Together and, and then continue across. Them. Yep. So things are going fairly well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Improvise as we go. <laughs> make make things up. Sometimes you have to unmake them and <laughs> come uh, up with a plan B. Not so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did we did these braces here to keep it from twisting this way. Yes, okay. And then when we put this one up. We the got other up end. with the tractor, and we hadn't done that. So you didn't so, bother? Well, we, of course we bothered. <laughs> yes, we got two braces on there now. It's just we did it after. Ah, you changed the order. 
Well, when you forget to do something, you. you <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so it wasn't a deliberate thing, it was because you forgot. <laughs> That's what old people do. <laughs> another day, another few trusses. Things are progressing. So are you guys close to uh, yes, we are. flipping that guy over? Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it looks kind of like a cool architectural detail, but... <laughs> well, would you look at that, would you? So what's this mess, Michael? Well, this mess was the home of my sawmill, uh, where it's resided, I'm not sure, seven, eight years now. You really had it that long? No, well, it's been quite a while. I would have thought about five, but okay. Whatever. <laughs> Several so, years. <laughs> so anyhow, one of the things that you may want to think about when you're setting up your sawmill, which of course it was everything was totally new experience, right? No experience with a sawmill or anything. So you're saying these are things you didn't think about. Right, so we <laughs> set it here along, and this is a bank. There's a bank down over here. Yep. So this is where, of course, you can see the, the exhaust side of the sawmill where all the, right? Nice fine sawdust if we needed so it for anything. It was almost impossible to get in there and really do anything like get the tractor with the bucket and, and haul it out. Ah, to get near, around near the, the back building. side. Yes, okay. Right. So anyhow, when we decided to, to move the mill uh, today, which we did. Which I missed because I was at work. Uh, it, it sits on, of course, two tires, and but there are six jack posts adjustable that it sits on. And of course, some of these were buried down in amongst years of Sawdust, Debris. <laughs> uh, bark, bark material, you know, just, <laughs> and so we managed to get it kind of dug out, and then I hooked onto it with Ralphie, and uh, as, as we're, we're giving it a, a pull, uh, of course, it's, the sawdust is much higher on that side than over on this side. Uh, and as the trailer comes out, the uh, trailer goes whoop, Ooh. And, and the sawmill head goes whoop. <laughs> <laughs> so it flopped right over on its side? Yep. And uh, it, it has two transport bolts that, that bolt the, 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 the saw head to the trailer. If, if we had had it bolted down, it may, I guess, simply tip the whole trailer over too. Okay. Uh, as it is, nothing was damaged. Uh, got the universal tractor with the bucket, picked up the saw head, got the trailer Put it back together. around. We kind of <laughs> cleaned it out some of all the sawdust that was around it. Uh, got it, got it, uh, the saw head loaded back on, and now... And this time you put the transport bolts on? <laughs> we did. <laughs> One, but on the upper side, so if it, it wouldn't tip over and fall off. Anyhow, we now have a new home for it. So we'll go over and have a look. We certainly will. Maybe to uh, properly explain 
if, if this was a software project, this would be a beta version. <laughs> Check. Nothing so far has been clearly uh, locked in as solid. These supports across here are temporary. These posts are simply sitting on concrete slabs with nothing holding them in place. And for those with a slight knowledge of construction would say, when we put a roof on this and we get a strong wind, this thing is simply going to blow away, <laughs> which is true. And we are going to lock it down somehow. We haven't quite answered that question yet. Ah, uh, okay. Because again, uh, like part of today, we, we built our little log loading system, which I'll show you from the other side, and we tested it. And so that's to make sure that this concept is working as we think it should. And so uh, my brother-in-law ran a large trial log, I, I think it was just the one, through it this afternoon after we had gotten this. And so I'll check with him and get his appraisal of how well is this working you know, do we kind of lock this in, or do we say, oops, we need to... <laughs> Plan uh, B. <laughs> this, this end, we had originally planned on putting a 8-foot extension, like a shed out, uh, extension out on this side. Uh, You've changed your mind on that? No. Uh, but to fully cover the mill, we probably don't need 8 feet, so we'll talk and discuss with everything in place so that you can see the reality of what it's like when you're operating the saw, right? Right. Because you can do all the design on paperwork, and unless you've done a dozen of these and know that the system works, you know, you end up going back and say, oh crap, I forgot about, you know, or I didn't <laughs> think about this, or I didn't. So this way, we're doing it kind of... Uh, piecemeal. <laughs> like a paint by number. <laughs> One number at a time. <laughs> And eventually we'll end up with a beautiful structure. We hope. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully before hurricane season. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, over <laughs> on to the other side here. So this is our log loading system. Uh, so right now we've been taking one log at a time using the trailer and, and the David Brown tractor, loading it on the mill, and so it's tying up a lot of equipment, uh, you know, to just do one simple task. And so this way, we can offload, the idea is up to a full trailer load that will sit on these two beams. We will probably hinge these, but right now, they would just sit like that. So, but the, we will have them hinged, so this is up and we'll need something to maybe fasten them with. Uh, basically, one person can then take a log, roll it onto the mill, move these back out of the way, and none of that, you know, David can be out picking up new logs or whatever we want to do. And so there's another one right here. Uh, we've tested it with quite a large log. He was probably yeah, close to 20 inches anyhow at the large end. Uh, rolled on, very simple. Nobody was injured, killed, or otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise maimed. And again, like I say, this is, this is beta testing. And so by the time we get done with a few more logs, we'll know for sure what uh, what to kind of lock into the design. Most of this here we're using is... <laughs> Doesn't look like real good wood. <laughs> ...cants that I cut out of, yeah, trees that I cut for years and sat around and they're, they're half rotten, but uh, they'll make good test beams. They'll serve the purpose for now. And it's very easy to just replace the whole darn thing. It's not sophisticated or high technology. So you're not, uh, like you're not spiking those into place or anything, they, they just sit there. Oh, there's a few screws. I okay. got a few screws in them. But 
But basically, no. I mean, the logs are placed The on, weight of the log will hold it in place. And boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't have to do very much. Uh, my brother-in-law is suspicious that the building frame we have right now in this current location may not be quite square. And certainly before we start kind of locking in the, the trusses by putting in our uh, strapping to install this, this steel roof, we probably should get it as square as possible. But again, we just move it around a bit until... <laughs> you just pick up a corner and move it over. <laughs> well, you could, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Cool. <laughs> uh, but probably just a few whacks and kicks and so on can do it too. <laughs> So you're not boarding the whole roof in, you're just putting struts to support the steel ceiling, or the steel roofing. Yeah, we'll use strapping, uh, one by three, one by four, uh, probably about every 16 inches, and uh, we'll nail the metal roofing to it. To that. Yeah. And uh, we're still thinking and evaluating what maybe we can do. We have a bit of an overhang here, which is good. Basically, one of our fairly major snow directions is out of the northeast uh, this way. Uh, whether maybe drop some of this down a bit. Uh, so the snow doesn't again, blow in. Yeah, or build something out further to just drop down a bit. As long as the logs can slide in under them, uh, you know, that would be perfectly fine. But again, we're just testing and trying things out. So are you boarding the sidewalls in, or you're just, it's just going to sit I on posts? This, I think the, the basically the north the end, north although side. It's technically, I guess, uh, northwest, yes, because that's a major snow direction. Uh, and the other thing is we need to create some, uh, what we're currently using the old uh, Chevy pickup for, uh, uh, equipment storage, <laughs> uh, we want to bring into the, the sawmill shed. Oh, okay, yes, okay. So, to store our blades, the ones that need sharpening versus the ones that are sharp. But, right. Uh, uh, have an axe in case there's a big knot that's sticking out that will interfere with the blade travel so you can take and whack it off. Uh, so Just, some basic tools and... Yeah, a cant hook uh, for rolling the logs. I mean, there's... It's not a huge amount, but there's enough stuff that we need to find storage for here within the building and ideally protect it from rain and snow and... Right. Yeah. So you're satisfied so far? Uh, assuming, assuming the trial cut, I left before uh, it actually... But, I mean, that was really all on the sawmill. So, yeah, so far, everything seems to be pretty good. <laughs> More or less according to plan. <laughs> Tomorrow we may be saying... Okay, that didn't work. Why the hell did we do that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, still a uh, plan in progress. It's a work in progress. A work in progress. I wouldn't emphasize plan. Because the planning part hasn't been real strong. Well, we, we just figure things out one problem at a as, time. As you go. <laughs> right. See, that that way we're, we're kind of free and loose. And, and you don't overtax your brains. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the key reasons. Because you try and do all this planning, you know, right up in your head and... Uh, it might explode. Well, you just forget about the real world that's, you know, like there's a post here, right? You forget <laughs> about that there's a post or something. And all of a sudden, what you spend a whole lot of time planning on just doesn't work in reality. So Until you're standing out here, you see it. <laughs> so I like the idea. It's like when I built the other uh, woodshed shelters and so on that we have. Uh, start with an idea. Okay, uh, 16 by 36, uh, 12 foot in one side, down to 7 foot on the other side. Okay, let's start building. So throw that up there. <laughs> right? 
And that's kind of, okay, now how do I deal with this? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I mean, it, it works. Uh, it's yeah, I used to do that with sewing. Yeah. Yeah. I just combined two or three different patterns, and now I don't like that sleeve. And Yeah. <laughs> change, change midstream with, nah, <laughs> I think I'll do this instead. <laughs> Doesn't pay to get too locked into ideas. <laughs> Anyway, uh, progress is definitely being made. It's kind of cool. Yep. So, thanks for watching. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a pain oh, in the butt. <laughs> my lie. Sorry. <laughs> I was prompting you. <laughs> thanks for watching, folks. <laughs> we do have fun. I mean, it's, it's lovely being out in the woodlot. Uh, uh, so, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one, and uh, stay safe. Catch you next time, guys.